Hey guys, Mark Allen, VH Spring Solutions LLC and VHSpringSolutions.com back for another session of High Power University. And the the uh, reason for this session is because this subject just keeps coming up these days uh, with increasing frequency and we keep getting pictures. And I want to show you the subject here in pictures. Um, that's a Browning High Power barrel. There's a fracture crack right there. I think we have a better close up right there and it shows you where the fracture crack happened on the barrel's cam lug. Another one here, this one is more subtle, it's tougher to see, but it stopped correct function and it's that fracture crack right along this edge. One of the things that I picked up on in this uh, close up here is boy doesn't it look like that edge of that barrel cam lug right there, doesn't it look like that thing has lived a hard life? And I think it's true, it has. Um, this one is not in appreciably better shape. You can see along this edge here. Um, here's one that uh, gave up the ghost completely and uh, returned to its original uh, two-piece state. And this is another subject that keeps coming up with a lot of frequency, and that is this locking lug cam. This is the relational mate or interacting mate to that barrel cam lug we were just looking at when the slide recoils. That one is fractured. Here's the picture of an inside of a high power where the uh, locking lug cam, that would be this piece right here, sometimes we generically call it the crossbar, um, uh, that locking lug cam completely left the picture in this one um, and the resulting uh, attempting to continue firing it you can see that broke the trigger lever this piece of metal here which is usually your uh, rearward uh, stop I guess you'd say for the trigger lever or the positioning of the trigger lever has actually been curled uh, back by the heat and the impact and we've got gouges here in the uh, insides of the frame area. This is really, uh, if it's not catastrophic damage, it's approaching catastrophic damage. Again, caused by this subject. And the subject specifically is the, and by the way, this video is coming to you today from the BH Service Center. This is um, kind of an exclamation point on the, uh, a high power previous high power university uh, session but this is one uh, this is a BH veterans high power uh, that's in our service center today and was the first one on the bench this morning and uh, this subject was of course on my mind uh, because of the, uh, the photographs we continue to get from uh, high power owners showing uh, this kind of damage now this is a 2014 um, a Browning high power and uh, with this is 2021 as we're making this so this is about a seven year old uh, about a seven year old handgun it's in beautiful uh, condition uh, not in any way has it been abused um, as we were taking a look at it this morning one of the first things I noticed was the length of the recoil spring now this is the original OEM recoil spring it is not the length that it started its life it has uh, started to fail to come back to its original relaxed length and I want to show you this would be a BH Spring Solutions uh, equivalent 17 pound recoil spring uh, compared to the OEM recoil spring and you can see the uh, obvious difference in the uh, in the dimensional length um, we did test fire this handgun just a few minutes ago and we're extracting empty shell casing standard pressure nine millimeter factory ammunition um, about 12 feet um, uh, the second round was uh, in the 11 to 12 foot range first round was about 12 feet that's really getting excessive and what we mean by excessive is the speed of the slide coming rearward is is uh, overcoming too quickly the resistance of the combination of the recoil spring and the slide is also in the action of cocking the hammer so it's also um, recoiling and pushing the hammer cocking the hammer against the force of the main spring or the hammer spring so um, and we consider 12 feet to be right on the edge of where you start unlocking the barrel before the bullets left the end of the barrel quite frankly and so when a spring starts to degrade and lose its lose its resistance 
One of the classic ways that it shows this is decreased relaxed dimensional length. Well, this is important part of a recoil springs integrity specifically because that relaxed dimensional length has a lot to do with, uh, well here, to, to show you the long way home on this, um, I can feel a real difference when I install this OEM recoil spring. There's very, very, very little resistance on that and it just installs. And then when we put a new BH Spring Solutions 17-pound uh, recoil spring, you can see the distance that I have to compress this. You can even see the resistance. That increase in resistance is all on the front end, uh, or what we call front end. Front end is when the spring is its maximum length installed, and that is its current state right now. When the slide recoils, and then when the slide is all the way back here like this, now you have a different dimension of that spring. It's compressed. And that's where we measure a, quote, 17-pound recoil spring. It means that it will push 17 pounds from the slide rearward position and the dimension that the spring is at that moment when the slide is fully rearward. Right now, the spring is in the condition that it would be in if the slide was fully forward. And that resistance is important because when we move rearward four millimeters, we already see the barrel starting to drop. In other words, the slide is releasing the barrel, the barrel is being pulled in uh, or down, uh, downward by the locking lug cam, uh, interacting with the barrel cam lug, and just that quickly, we have found that locking lug cam and of course it's usually close to invisible uh, it looks like an oval on the outside and they've done a nice job of machining it down and hiding hiding it on uh, both sides but this is that resistance right there and that's the resistance i just showed you is so much more robust with a new recoil spring as compared to in this case a only seven year old recoil spring it's uh, significant enough that it's allowing um, show you what happens the slide releases the the locking lug cam basically drags the barrel downward out of the slide and this engagement surface here and the front of the locking lug cam you see there these two have a crash every time that slide comes rearward and, and you know it's it, uh, some may call it a crude a rather crude design it is one of the more crude aspects of the high power design that is that you do have metal slamming into metal every time that slide comes rearward this is when the integrity of your springs just becomes the exclamation point because the punch line about all of these pictures is we don't know of any of these barrels. We don't know of any of these um, uh, uh, locking lug cams having been subjected to, you know, plus P ammunition. Um, when we go out and we shoot this uh, Browning High Power this morning with the original springs, the slide velocity is excessive. We don't even need to talk about plus P ammunition. It's creating a uh, crash between the barrel cam lug and the locking lug cam that is more severe that is more violent than it needs to be in order to cycle successfully the slide and, and uh, reintroduce the next round of ammunition out of the magazine. So this is really the exclamation point because a lot of people say, well, you know, what do I need to do in order so my gun doesn't get damaged by shooting plus P uh, or, or, you know, whatever it is. Um, plus P is a, is, 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 uh, a subject but it's not the the what's going on here in these pictures that we've uh, that we've just showed you because this morning just you know the shooting that we did this was more impact with the barrel cam lug and the locking lug cam than there needs to be in other words it's already you know, becoming somewhat abusive to itself by not having significant sufficient resistance from uh, the combination of the recoil spring and the hammer spring which is down here uh, in the frame the best prescription 
for avoiding this in your high powers now and decades from now. The best prescription is a BH Spring Solutions Complete Spring Kit and we can't stress this enough, changing out all the springs in your high power all at the same time, not individually, not mixing and matching between manufacturers. We know the recoil spring is an easy one to replace, so a lot of people jump on that and replace it out. Uh, but all of the springs in the high power are important. Again, even that hammer spring that's on, or, or it's the correct word is the main spring, it's on the hammer strut at the bottom of the hammer assembly. And that is what creates resistance for the hammer, which is part of your recoil uh, control equation so when this when the weapon has been fired and the slide now has to come rearward it must push this hammer rearward causing it to cock and it's pushing it against the resistance of that mainspring this hammer is actually cocking fairly uh, easily for a high power but it is the original mainspring it's not been replaced yet we see how uh, tired the original recoil spring is um, this creates continuing to function with this spring setup, the original springs in this high power inevitably is creating a cumulative effect on that locking lug cam which can in the future lead to uh, lead to failure. Um, so the the BH Spring Solution Advanced Barrel has the same uh, similar design as this late generation OEM barrel. This is again a 2014 production. We see the enhanced uh, amount of metal here forward of the barrel cam lug. Uh, that's an Im, uh, that's an important thing, um, and very similar design work. These barrel cam lugs on this modified design do not have any reputation for fracture. Um, the locking lug cams have had a reputation for fracture and we do strongly believe that if a high power is kept uh, correctly sprung with healthy springs, this is your best defense against damage on this uh, particular area. A lot of people are surprised that this crash happens after so little slide travel it's kind of almost invisible and silent but it's happening um, every time and you just don't want that impact that crash to be any more severe or any more violent than it needs to be in order to uh, successfully cycle uh, the handgun um, when we talk about you know having a 17 pound recoil spring in a handgun if we compress this to the back end in other words install this original spring retract the slide all the way back and we measure the push of this spring it may very well be pushing still 16 16 and a half 17 pounds from that compressed state but there's another resistance point and now you know what it is it's the relaxed dimensional length that has to do with the resistance you have on that all important front end front end we often think in terms of you know protecting my you know gun and my slide and frame from the forces of the recoil and we often think of it as that back end crash where the slide and the frame collide and then the slide starts going back forward in the high power pistol there's a much more vulnerable area and that vulnerable area is the crashing of these two metal parts every time the slide starts uh, rearward Okay, I'm Mark Allen, BA Spring Solutions LLC and BA Spring Solutions.com for High Power University. Thanks for watching.